Okay, I am back with... This is going to be the last part. This will be part 7 of Q&A number 4. This is going to be it. Um, it doesn't matter how long it's going to be, but this is it. This is the final part, the final countdown, whatever you want to call it. And the uh, two questions, um, not questions, but two sets of questions that I'm going to be answering are from my good friends, uh, Rainbow Raft from Life and zero cool uh, 1389 um, so uh, these two guys figured save them for last because they are um, two of my closest friends here on YouTube and uh, you know figured why not so here we go um, first up Rambo Raft for Life aka Matt sent in 10 questions and it's always funny because every time I've done these and he sent in questions he always puts at the beginning um, it's hard to come up with questions, but every time he's come up with really good questions. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, number one, have you checked out the 2012 cartoon of the Ninja Turtles? If so, what are your thoughts on it? And if not, what are your thoughts on what you have heard about it? Uh, for me, it's a bit overrated BS, <clears throat> but that's just me. Um, I actually have not sat down and watched a complete episode of the 2012 cartoon. Um, I have seen, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is just all uh, scratchy today. I have seen various clips of episodes. I have seen portions of episodes. But again, I have never sat down and watched a complete episode. I'm actually pulling it up now because... There are some things I would like to uh, discuss about this show, but I, I have never seen a complete episode. Um, <clears throat> do I really have an interest in seeing it? To be frank, no, I do not. I really just do not look forward to this show. I know it's been on for, I believe they're in season four, or they're getting ready to do season four. I'm Again, I'm trying to pull it up, but it's not... It's not cooperating um, with me, but here we go. I just, I missed one word. On Wikipedia, you know, it's got to be perfect or it's not on there. Um, you know, I just have no interest in it. Even when they first announced it, I was like, okay, it's a Ninja Turtles show. And I, I'm glad that it's on. I'm glad that there is still a Ninja Turtles cartoon because that way the younger generation, the kids can, you know, see it. And that, yeah, to some people, <clears throat> to some kids, that's their version of Ninja Turtles. And that's cool, you know. If that's what you like, cool. If I just, you know, you can like it, but I don't have to like it. And I know that a lot of people have said that it is the best incarnation of Ninja Turtles. It is their favorite incarnation of Ninja Turtles. And, hey, you know, if that's... uh. If that's your cake, go ahead and eat it. You know, that that's fine. Um, they just started Season 4. So I, I was right. So they just started Season 4 um, last week. Last Sunday, Season 4 began. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, that's cool if people like it. I just have no interest in it. Um, again, I've never seen an episode and... Um, Oh, shit, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm doing, like, a couple different things here at once. Um, all these torrents started downloading, and I don't want that to happen because it'll eat up all my internet, and I have a cap on my internet, so I don't want to waste all my data in the beginning of the month, which I do hate that. I hate that shit so much, but, you know, you pay all this fucking money, and... That's another rant for another day. But, um, what was I saying about this show? Yeah, I just, you know, maybe one day, um, I know that the first two seasons are available on DVD. Um, season three, I, I think, season three, volume one is out. Um, so I don't know when they're going to release the second set or if they're going to go back and do... Because that was weird how they... It's kind of like... See, the the thing with Ninja Turtles is it's always got fucked over on the DVD releases. Because, you know, the original series, they did the volumes. And then they started doing the season sets. 
Um, you know, the 2003 series, it was the same way. You know, they did the volumes, and then they went back and they started to do season sets, but they never finished them. This show is the same way. You know, they've released um, three volumes, and then they released the complete first season. And then they released three more volumes, and then they did the complete first and second season. And then they went back and released uh, Volume 7, which is from the first season. And then Season 3, they did one volume, and then Season 3, Volume 1. Like, none of that makes sense. Like, none of that stuff makes sense. Does that make any sense to anybody? Like, why? They, they still continue to do it. But I don't know, maybe one day, um, if I can find the, the complete first and second season, if I can find that really cheap, like less than 20 bucks, eh, maybe, you know, may, I know Walmart carries it, but I think it's like $30 or something, and I'm not paying that much uh, for something I really don't have an interest in. If it was less than 20 bucks, if it was on sale or something, eh, maybe, you know, maybe pick it up to check it out. But, um, you know, I just, it just doesn't, and I know that people say, well, you can't judge it until you've seen it. I'm tired of hearing that excuse. I really am. I hate that excuse. It doesn't matter if I'm judging it or not. If I don't want to see it, I don't want to see it. You know? But I just have no... I really have no interest in seeing it. It just doesn't look like it's for me. But I don't like... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I just don't like all the praise that this show is getting. I mean, you know, they... First of all... I like, I mean, I like how it's 3D, you know, like 3D when it's a cartoon, that's cool because there's been a lot of 3D shows that I've liked. Reboot was a great show, it was a great cartoon that was 3D. Uh, Starship Trooper Chronicles, really loved, great show. Um, so there's, there's been a lot of 3D um, cartoons that I have liked, that I have enjoyed over the years. Um, so when they do it in a cartoon form, I like that. That's kind of cool. You know, I like that that idea. I think it works. Um, so that's not a problem with that. But I don't like the praise that this show gets. Like It's like everywhere I go, I just see, oh my god, this is the best Ninja Turtles cartoon. This is the best show. And, you know, it, it, this is the end-all, be-all. And, you know, they got this big cast. You know, they had Rob uh, Paulson as Donatello. And I don't like Donatello's fucking buck teeth. It's stupid. I heard Raphael was a pussy, so I'm not looking forward to that. You know, Jason Biggs was Leonardo for the first two seasons and th that he left. But in reality, what happened was he said something stupid on Twitter and Nickelodeon was like, well, you either quit or you get fired, and he quit. So that was stupid. You know, Sean Astin is Raphael. Uh, Greg Sipes, I don't know who Greg Sipes is, I'm, I'm pulling, pulling that up now. He's a actor, singer, musician, composer, and professional surfer. He, okay, he was Beast Boy in Teen Titans. Okay, I like Teen Titans, I like the original Teen Titans, I've never seen Teen Titans go, but I heard it's not that good. He was he had a cameo in Fifty First Dates. He was in Fast and Furious as Dwight Mueller, whoever that is. Fast and Furious Four for those that you know don't know the movie titles. And he's done a lot of, of voiceover work. Which that's cool. I've never like I said, I've never really heard of him besides Teen Titans. But that's still cool. Um May Whitman as April O'Neil. She's a hottie. She was on Arrested Development. She was in Independence Day. Yeah, she was... Um, yeah, she was Bill Pullman's daughter in Independence Day. Yes, that is correct. I forgot. It has been so... It's been a long time since I've seen Independence Day. I haven't seen that movie in forever. I don't even have it on DVD. I have to pick that up on DVD at some point. Uh, she was in uh, Bye Bye Love. One, Yeah, she was also in One Fine Day with George Clooney. I remember watching that as a kid. Um, so, yeah, okay, I know who Mae Whitman is, obviously. She's a hottie, so that's okay, I guess. Um, and then you have Phil Lamar as Baxter Stockman because they changed Baxter, 
Baxter Stockman to being black like he was in the the original comics, which is cool. It's fine by me. Um, Nolan North as the voice of the Krang. It's not Krang anymore. It's the Krang. Um, he does the voice of Drake from Uncharted. Assassin's Creed. Okay, he's a voiceover guy. Um, yeah, Corey Feldman as Slash. I'm sorry, Corey Feldman as a dick. Roseanne Barr as Krang Prime, because that's necessary. Kelly Hu as Karai. Casey Jones is the voice of Josh Peck. You know, I just, I don't get it. I just don't get why all of a sudden they, now all of a sudden Ninja Turtles gets all this, you know, these high, you know, these big names. Yeah, now Seth Green is the voice of Leonardo. You know, they get all these big time actors. The show gets all this praise. You know, they bring back the original voice cast because they did the, the team up episode. Well, why couldn't they do that for Turtles Forever or the 2003 cartoon? Which more on that in a little bit. But from Matt, there's another question about that. That'll be the last question. But I like how it begins and ends with Ninja Turtles, which is fine by me. Um, but yeah, I just don't understand. I, and I don't like how this show gets the praise and this show gets the pass. You know, the I know a lot of people still love the original cartoon, and that's great because if it was not for that cartoon, we would nev- have never had the Ninja Turtles franchise. It would have just died off. Um, the 2003 cartoon is great. It's awesome. I don't understand why people shit on it, but more on that in a little bit. I don't want to get ahead of myself. You know, so I don't, yeah, I don't get why this show just gets the pass. It gets the praise. Everyone acts like it's the greatest, you know, Ninja Turtles cartoon ever, you know. Yeah, Michael Dorn from Star Trek is on the show. He did voices of characters. You know, I just don't understand it, you know, at all. But, you know, that's just... That's just how the world is now. It's just, oh, well, it's mediocre, but that's okay because there's... That's it. That's all you're getting. We're not going to try anymore. But, whatever. So... From what I've seen, I don't like. I don't like this shit where Raphael is a pussy. He's just a wimp. And, you know, Donnie with his fucking buck teeth. He just looks stupid. Like, why why the fuck is that necessary? For Donatello to have buck teeth. I don't get that. And, you know, April O'Neil is a teenager. Never been, I know... Some versions do that where they make April younger. I don't like that. April, I always liked her as the reporter. She was an adult. The turtles are supposed to be teenagers, not her. You know, I I don't get it. But, yeah, this show, from what I've seen... Excuse me, I was not impressed. If I ever, like I said, if I ever find the, the complete first and second season DVD really, really cheap, like... Ten dollars or something used. I'm not paying brand new. Um, you know, I'll get it just to watch it, just to see what it's like. But I just, I really have no interest in seeing it, folks. For those out there that like it, cool. For those that don't, that's cool too. So, I mean, I I do think it's overrated because everyone, you know, gives it the pass. They give it the praise. You know, it's just like the greatest thing since sliced bread, and I don't like that, because what about the, you know, what about the 2003 cartoon? You know, what what about Next Mutation? I like Next Mutation. What about the original cartoon? You know, people don't really talk about that anymore. You know, what about Ninja Turtles 3? I've always liked Ninja Turtles 3. Hell, I even like the CGI movie. It's not perfect. I think there's some really cool ideas in the movie, though. Um... But, you know, but again, like I said, that's just what we have come to expect about life. You know, it's just, they do the bare minimum and we're supposed to sit there and like it. And that's not how it works. But there's nothing we can do because they keep doing the same shit. But, oh, well. So, yeah, I need to move on because I, I'm going to sit, I could sit here all day and just bitch about Ninja Turtles and, and how it gets fucked over and how it's not right. And, you know. At least, Nickelodeon, at least go back and fucking re-release the 2003 cartoon the right way. Because 
the three DVDs that have come out are just fucking random. Like before, actually, no, they've done more than three. I'm sorry, they have done one, two, three, four. They've done five DVDs so far. I apologize. And they're random episodes. The fuck? Seriously, it's not hard. But moving on, like I said, I could sit there all day. Um, why is it that great films like Dread flop and yet crap like Super Chuds, a.k.a. the Last Ninja Turtles movie bullshit, uh, got the pass and the money slash box office, and then in parentheses it says, even though everyone was crapping on it before it came out, considering the horrible script ideas, trailers, look of the turtles, etc., and um, parentheses. Um, if people hated the Turtles flick so much before it came out, then honestly, why didn't they just download it instead of paying money to support it? Great question. And again, I was kind of talking about this in the previous question, but th- like, I, that, like I was saying, you know, the way that society is now, it's not just with movies, it's with everything. You know, people, you know, all they, all people want to do is bitch and complain and piss and moan. People are not happy unless they're fucking complaining and they're bitching and they're, you know, and they're pissing and they're moaning, you know, because people have to have attention, you know, they have to have the spotlight on them. And that's the problem. That's the big problem with social media, YouTube accounts, because, you know, there's no such thing as the Internet anymore. It's just social media, you know, that's the problem with social media with Facebook, with Twitter, with YouTube, with whatever, you know, everybody has a voice, and that is a problem, you know, people will say, how is that not, how is that a problem, Fabio, everyone should have a voice, but it's the problem, because everybody puts whatever they want out there, and that's the thing, like, you know, a movie like Dread, okay, when Dread was first announced, I was like, okay, you know, it's not really a remake, Um, it's just another movie with Judge Dredd, okay? I like the Stallone movie. Not a great movie, but I have fun with it. You know, I grew up with the film. I think it's entertaining. And the 2012 film with Carl Urban was great. You know, it was R-rated, because the Stallone film, I mean, it's it's R-rated, but it's like a light R. It's not, you know, kind of like Expendables 2 was. It's a light R. It's not really rated R. It's just, you know, they added some things in there to make it R, you know. But that's another topic for another day. You know, Dread was, it was original. It was an original idea. I thought the delivery was good. The acting was good. The action sequences I liked. Um, Not perfect because they're shaky cam, they're CGI, which are things that I don't like about modern film. But... Overall, the movie was fun and it was entertaining. Why did it flop? Is the That's the million dollar question. Why did this movie flop? Um, I think it flopped because Judge Dredd is still an obscure character. Like A lot of people don't really know about Judge Dredd besides the Stallone movie and now this film. Um, you know, So it is a little bit of a hard sell for people that don't really know about the character or people that don't read comics or whatever um you know so i think that's one of the reasons why the movie flopped because again it is uh you know it's just an obscure thing like even when i was younger you know i have some of the the uh, judge dread comics and people like my friends would come over and they're like who's judge dread like what is this comic book I said, it's Judge Dredd. I said, you never saw the movie with Stallone? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, it's this cop in the future and the world's kind of going to shit, but they make it, you know, different and, you know, trying to, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. But yeah, I think that that flopped because it was, you know, it was an obscure character. One of the reasons why it flopped. I think another reason why it flopped is because of what I just said. It's original. It's different. People are afraid of... Or that's the thing. People are afraid of originality. People don't want to see something different. They want to see the same shit over and over and over again. That's why they keep making sequels to these films. That's why they keep making Spider-Man movies. 
They've made five Spider-Man movies so far, and it's all the fucking same. It's the same fucking movie over and over again. I mean, how many different ways can you do a Spider-Man film? Not many. It's not, It's you know, it's not, you know, oh, well, let's do this and let's do that and let's put Spider-Man. No, it's not complicated at all. It's fucking Spider-Man. Okay, it's very simple. But, you know, again, you know, uh, that's why they keep making, you know, all these superhero films. And then they remake them. And then they remake them again. You know, it's just because no one wants something different. No, And you don't have to do anything new. And you don't have to do anything 100% original because it's never going to happen. Not in today's um, world because they've done everything. Everything has been done at this point, you know. Every kind of movie imaginable has been done. There's nothing 100% original. But when they try to do something different like Dread or like The Last Stand with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which flopped. You know, nobody wants to see that kind of stuff. They want to see the same shit over and over and over again every single fucking year. You know? And that's why, that's I think, the other reason why it flopped. And I know... It did well on DVD and Blu-ray, and then see that's the thing. Like when it was in theaters, nobody gave a shit. But now on DVD and Blu-ray, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, you know, Dread's like awesome, and it's like the best movie ever." And that's the thing. Like, and I know that's part of the question. Um, you know, why? You know, I know that you asked, like, you know, people. Why did people bitch about Ninja Turtles before? And then when it came out, they changed their mind. That's the thing, you know. People, when it's um, when it's out in theaters, like Dread, you know, it's it's no good. You know, nobody gives a shit. And then all of a sudden, when it comes out on DVD, and that word of mouth goes around, oh well, yeah, okay, yeah, this movie's good, and okay, I like this, and that'll work, and this is good. You know, we should get a sequel. You know, all of a sudden, people change their mind. You know. So, and that's bullshit. It's just such bullshit. But, um, the other part to that question, you know, like I was saying, you know, people, they're not happy unless they're complaining and they're bitching and they're pissing and they're moaning. And we all do it. No, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't do it. Because I do, you know. I just watch some of my videos. Um, you know, I do it. Everybody does it. Nobody's... Uh, um, uh, exiled from that, you know. But, you know, so, yeah, I think, you know, when they... I th the problem with these remakes and everything, that's the thing. Like, at first, people were like, oh, well, no, like, you can't remake that, fuck that, you know, this isn't... You can't do that. And that's how they were with Ninja Turtles. Everyone was all upset, everyone was all pissed off, and they're like... Well, okay, they're going to be aliens. Okay, they're not going to be aliens. Okay, the Shredder is going to be um, a special forces soldier and, you know, and this and that. And then, you know, the script leaked out. Well, that's not the regular script and that's not going to happen. And all the trailers sucked and all the turtles look like the Hulk, you know. And then all of a sudden when the movie came out, it made fucking, what, $400 million and... Uh, I don't. I'm not even gonna bother to look it up because I don't give a fuck, you know. Um, but you know, all of a sudden, yeah, it made all this money, and people were like, "Oh, it wasn't that bad, and it was good, and it was better than any of the other movies." And you know, people they just again, like with Dread, you know, they they change sides, they flip, you know. It's like they first they hate it and then they like it, or first they like it and then they hate it. And this is something I talk about all the time. And again, it's not new, because look at, you know, I know Star Wars is on everybody's brain and everything. You know, look at Star Wars. When the prequels, you know, when The Phantom Menace was coming out, you know, it was the biggest movie. It was a big deal. You know, everyone was excited. They were hyping it. You know, they were, you know, acting like it was the greatest movie of all time, which they're doing the same thing now with this new film, and it's not even out yet. And then all of a sudden, when the movie came out, people turned and said, oh, well, that sucked, and 
oh, well, that's not that good of a movie, and, you know, fuck this movie, and blah, 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 blah. You know, all of a sudden, people flip-flop. So it's not new, like I keep saying. It's it's the same thing, you know. It's just now it's more... Now it's accepted, you know. People are like, oh, well, you know, that's okay because it's mediocre, it's bland, it's unoriginal, um... You know who cares? That's just that's just what we're given, and that's what we have to deal with now. And if you don't like it, fuck you. You know that is just the idea that is has been placed in people's heads, where you know we're supposed to just accept what they give us. We have no say, and if we don't like it, we're part of the minority, and we're wrong. And you know everybody hates us because you know we don't like it. You know that's the thing. Like if you don't like it, it's you know. You're you're not in you're not in the cool kid crowd. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think it's just total bullshit and I just I hate this. You know, I, I just hate this fucking idea of Hollywood how they do this, you know? And yeah, I just hate it when people fucking flip flop. Like Dread didn't see it in theaters, um, didn't get a chance to. I wanted to, but I heard a lot of good things. I was interested in the film. I saw it at a friend's house because we were hanging out. We went to see another movie. We went to yeah, we went to the theaters to see something. I can pull it up here. Excuse me. Because I like I said, um I keep a list of all the movies that I watch just for fun. I like doing that for fun. Okay. Um I think it might have been the last stand. I think we saw The Last Stand, and then we went to Walmart, and my friend bought Dread, and then we went back to his house and watched that. I think that is correct. No, it was not The Last Stand. Okay, let me just do this. No, it was A Good Day to Die Hard. Yeah, we went to see A Good Day to Die Hard in the theaters, and then... He bought Dread, and we went to his house and watched it. That's right. So, yeah, and I really liked it. I thought it was a good movie, and, see, my opinion didn't change. You know, I saw the trailers. I was like, okay, this could be cool. I like the character. I like the idea. You know, I can I can get behind this movie. You know, again, didn't get a chance to see it in the theaters. Was hanging out with my friend. We went to see another movie. We went to Walmart afterwards. He's like, oh, I want to see this. He bought it. We enjoyed it. We both liked it. So, yeah, it's it's a really good movie. I really like it. See, But I just don't like when, you know, these people flip-flop, you know. And, again, you know, people aren't happy unless the spotlight, the attention is on them. And, yeah, and they're not happy unless they're bitching and pissing and moaning and complaining. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get why movies like Dread Flop. I mean, I do get it. It's because they're different. They're original. They don't go with the flow, and that's the thing. Like everybody wants to go with the flow. Go against the fucking flow. Be yourself. Don't follow the fucking trend. But can't tell people that. So moving on, question number three: How do you feel about certain fan films not getting made? For example, the Solo Raphael fan film. And yet all these other Hollywood um, crap getting served to us, on, or served on a silver platter to the audience. Yeah, like I know, um, I think, actually me and John and uh, Wild Man Beyond, when we did our podcast about that, we that was one of the um, the things that we talked about, you know, how... Uh, you know, how certain fan films, like we talked about Raphael, we talked about some other things, um, you know, how these movies, you know, get don't get made, these movies get fucked over in favor of something stupid. And again, you know, like with the Raphael fan film, it was going to be rated R, it was going to be action, it was going to be a lot of fun, and people didn't support it, but they supported this fucking remake. And again, like I was saying, I think it goes hand in hand with the previous question that you asked. It's, um, you know, I think it's just that thing where, you know, people want it. 
or people don't want it. it. It works both ways. They either want it or they don't want it. And then for whatever reason it doesn't work out, like the funding doesn't come through or or the people working on the film become disinterested or whatever the problem is. And then all of a sudden they turn. And like, well, fuck that. And then something else happens, like the remake, and like, oh, well, we'll support this. We'll support this remake because, again, that's what's trending. That's what's popular. That's what the cool kids like, so we have to like that too. And yeah, it goes hand in hand. It's the same fucking thing. You know, it's when they try to do something different, when they try to be original for a change and and try to appeal to a different sect of the crowd... You know, that's a problem. It's a problem to be different. It's a problem to try and do something fun. You know, apparently so. You know? That's why the Raphael fan film didn't get made. That's why Dread flopped. That's why The Last Stand flopped. That's why Sabotage flopped. I mean, it was a shitty movie, but the idea, you know, the thing that I'm, it's not, you know, it should have been a success. It's just that idea. You know, that that movie tried to be different, and it flopped. I mean, again, it was a shitty film. Bull to the Head is a shitty film with Stallone. But, you know, when they try to be different, it's just, oh, well, that that doesn't count. You know, that, that doesn't work. You know, no one cares about that. You know, and that's the thing, you know, and that's why a movie, um like a Raphael fan film or any kind of fan film, like Predator Dark Ages. I don't know what the uh, the uh, the status of that film is, but um, you know that would have been that would be cool to see, or any you know any kind of fan film, or just a different something different, just something different. It'll never, but it'll never happen because that's you know, what we as a society have just come to accept. We have come to accept the mediocrity. We have come to accept the the remakes and the reboots and the reimaginings and the the rehashes and the same shit over and over and over again. The unnecessary sequels, the the found footage films which are all the same. People are like it's not the same. It is. It's they put the camera somewhere and something happens and they watch it back later. It's the same shit. All these found footage films are the same. It's the same fucking movie every time. But again, when they try to be different, that's a problem. But the fan films, you know, the fan film, it's tough because it's independent. You have to raise the money on your own. You have to do the crowdfunding and stuff. I I get that. I mean, I understand that you know, it is harder, but I just don't get why people aren't, you know, I get why people aren't supportive of these films, because they don't understand it. Most people, you know, the the general populace doesn't understand what fan films are and doesn't understand what it's like to to make your own movie without a studio and everything like that. Um, and that's why these. I think a lot of these don't make it. But you know, I am supportive of these films. I mean, I'm, I can't donate money, but I am supportive of, of a like a Raphael fan film. But, you know, again, I think it's it goes hand in hand with the previous question. It's just when when something when someone tries to be different and say, hey, let's try this. Let's do this instead of that. Let's try to be different. Let's try to be original for a change. People are like, no, fuck that. We can't. That's not. That's not, you know, our thing. We cannot do that. You know, we we have to we have to do it this way. We have to remake this. You know, we have to follow the trend. You know, it's just it's just complete total fucking bullshit. That's a quote from me. It's complete total fucking bullshit and I'm tired of it. I know a lot of other people are tired of it. It's not going to change because people are fucking stupid and they keep paying to see these movies. If you want it to stop, then stop going to the movies. It's as simple as that. But it'll never happen because people are fucking robots and they follow their orders. But yeah, you know, Hollywood just keeps shoving the same goddamn fucking shit down our throats every year. But something like Dread or Raphael and Fan Film or whatever doesn't make it.
because it tries to be something different. Different is not bad, folks. Different is good. But oh well. Uh, number four. What are your thoughts about Bruce Willis's seemingly current insanity, a.k.a. his current I-don't-give-a-fuck-about-my-career attitude? Very good question. Bruce Willis is a dick. That is a quote from me. Another quote. Bruce Willis is just a cocksmith. He is a dick. Fuck Bruce Willis. Seriously, I love the guy as an actor. I think he is a great actor. I enjoy many of his films. I have always been a big fan of his acting. Um, I have always been a big fan of him. I've, I've always been a big fan of, of, of Bruce Willis because he's from Jersey. You know, he's a Jersey boy. Um, I'm not from Jersey, but I have blood from there. I have, I have roots in New Jersey. Um, but, you know, I've always liked him. You know, he... He's, you know, he's done a lot of good things. You know, he supports the military and, you know, he is outspoken about a lot of things. And, you know, he is that larger, he has that larger than life persona. And I think he believes his own hype and I think he believes his own bullshit. Hence why he's a dick. I mean, that it's as simple as that folks and I know people are saying well you don't know him personally but you you know I've heard so many stories not just from Kevin Smith I mean that's a Kevin Smith is not one of my favorite people either uh, but that's another topic for another day but you know when I met Tom Atkins he said the same thing he's like yeah Bruce Willis was a dick when I met Miko Hughes yeah Bruce Willis is a dick you know, the shit with Expendables 3. Okay, Expendables 3 sucked. Maybe Bruce Willis saw the writing on the wall. I don't know, but the way that he went about it was dickish. You know, oh, well, you know, that that's, I need more money. Bruce Willis, you have more than enough money. You're probably, you, your movies have made $3 billion. I think you have enough money for a while. You don't need a million dollars a day for a cameo in Expendables 3. You know. But, uh, yeah, I know in recent years, like the past couple of years, you know, Bruce Willis has just gone off the fucking deep end. And, you know, he's just saying all this weird shit. You know, like, he's doing these interviews and... You know, he's just like, oh, first he's like avoiding, first he's like avoiding questions, and then he's not answering the questions that they ask. They ask a question, and then he answers a different question, and then, you know, he just gives just shitty answers. You know, I, I just, I don't know what happened to Bruce Willis, like. I, I have no idea what happened to him. Did he smoke, you know, did he smoke a bunch of pot with Kevin Smith? Like, did that change him? Or did he just, you know, I don't know what happened to Bruce Willis. I really don't. But, yeah, he just does not give a fuck about his career. It's evident, you know, the the, the reason why A Good Day to Die Hard was a bad movie, you know, which most people will say. I mean, it's not... A fantastic movie. It's not a. I wouldn't even say it's a good movie. It's so so. It's a time waster. Um. So yeah, I would actually, you know, to be perfectly honest, I would agree with that statement that it's not a good movie. It's just Bruce Willis was a big problem in that film because he's just, you know, he's sleepwalking. He's just standing there. Yeah. Okay. The Kai motherfucker. Yeah, I'm gonna go shoot these guys. Okay, I'm Bruce Willis. All right, Yippee Kai motherfucker. He just, I don't know. He just does not give a fuck anymore. Like what? I wanna know what happened. Like, can someone tell me what happened? Cause he used to be a really good actor. Like now, not so much. Moonlighting was a good show. I don't I don't even know is it on DVD? 
Yeah, they're all on DVD, but they were released over 10 years ago, so they're all out of print, and they probably go for a lot of money. Um, but, I mean, the first four Die Hard films are excellent. I prefer the first three. I grew up with the first three. I prefer... My favorite's always been Die Hard with a Vengeance. But the Die Hard films are classics. The first four. Hudson Hawk... Hudson Hawk is a lot of fun. I, I don't... I don't care what people say. I've always liked Hudson Hawk. I think it's a fun movie. It's a goofy movie. Last Boy Scout is my favorite Bruce Willis film. I love The Last Boy Scout. It's just a great underrated action film. I don't know why it wasn't a bigger hit. Um, I know it made... I think it broke even. Um, no, it was... A, it was... It made a profit. It made a good chunk of money. It made a good profit. But... Um, it's just... They were, you know, they were expecting it to be a diehard type of film. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good size hit. And I know it's become a very popular movie on TV and through video and stuff, but I love The Last Boy Scout. Yeah, it is my favorite um, Bruce Willis film, and it's my favorite Tony Scott film. I got no problem saying that. I love that movie. Last Boy Scout kicks ass. Um, Death Becomes Her is a funny movie. Hilarious movie. Striking Distance I've always liked. Pulp Fiction, I thought Bruce Willis was great. One of the best things about that movie, in my opinion. Twelve Monkeys is good. I know people are kind of split on that movie. I know people don't like the ending, but I like Twelve Monkeys. Last Man Standing, I've always liked. I liked him in the Beavis and Butthead movie. Fifth Element is great. Fifth Element is one of my favorite. Um, definitely in the top five for Bruce Willis. And one of my favorite sci-fi movies of all time. I like The Jackal, Mercury Rising, Armageddon, The Siege. I just picked that up on DVD. Um, wasn't the biggest fan of The Sixth Sense. I think Unbreakable is a better movie. Um, Tears of the Sun was great. Hostage was good. I like 16 Blocks. I like Lucky Number 11, although he's not the star. You know, Live Free or Die Hard was good. Um, Cop Out was okay. I liked him in Expendables 1 and 2. I liked the first uh, Red movie. Red 2 was alright, wasn't great. I like Looper. Looper was really the last good Bruce Willis movie. Everything after that, A Good Day to Die Hard sucked. Red 2 was decent, not great, but decent. G.I. Joe Retaliation, thank God he wasn't the star. I didn't see Sin City 2, I still haven't even seen the first one, but I don't know what happened to Bruce Willis, and I know he was doing something on Broadway, and he got fired because he was just being him, you know, he was being Bruce Willis... He was being the dick that he is. So yeah, I don't know why Bruce Willis is just a dick. But um, if he keeps it up, he's not... I mean, people are just going to get tired of his shit. And he's he's got enough money. I mean, he really doesn't have to do Die Hard 6. And, you know, he doesn't have to do any more movies. I guess he just wants more money. So, you know, he just keeps doing it. But if he keeps this shit up, nobody's going to want to fucking work with him. I mean, and he's in all these directed video movies. Haven't seen them, but, um, you know, what are we talking about here? Set Up, Catch 44, uh, The Cold Light of Day, Fire with Fire, The Prince, Vice. These movies sound like shit. They sound like you're just your generic, you know, directed video shit. It's what it sounds like to me, folks. But, yep, I mean, Bruce Willis, he's a dick. I mean, it's it's well known that he is a dick. And, you know, just fuck Bruce Willis, seriously. I don't, I don't really care. Like, Die Hard 6, I don't give a shit about. I don't care about whatever he's going to be in next. I, just, I don't fucking care about Bruce Willis anymore. I used to love the guy. And when all this stories came out about him I lost a lot of respect for him and you know I just I don't care about Bruce Willis anymore I'm sorry I people were like well, that's rude it's not rude it's true I don't give a shit he's just a dickhead and you know it's just disappointing it was disappointing to hear all that stuff 
So fuck Bruce Willis. Moving on. Number five, what does Stallone need to do to regain his career? Because it is not going to happen with Creed. Um, I think Creed will be a hit. I don't think it's going to be a huge, phenomenal hit. Um, but I do think it's going to be... It's going to it's gonna at least make a profit. Um, I don't know how much the budget is. I'm going to look at that in a minute here. But, you know, and again... <laughs> I keep talking about this, but it's that... It's that thing where people are like, oh, well, you know, that's that's Rocky. Yeah, that's Rocky. Yeah, we got to see it. It's it's Rocky. There's no other, you know, there's, there's only one. It's Rocky, you know, and that's the thing. Like, people get all fucking excited because it's Rocky, you know, but, it, oh, it's it's not Rocky. It's a it's a spinoff. It's not really Rocky. It's, it's a fucking Rocky movie. It's Rocky Five Part Two. Because Rocky is training some guy, and then Rocky's going to die at the end of the movie. It's true. People are like, no, Rocky can't die. Well, guess what? It's going to happen. I'm sorry. People are like, well, you don't know. The movie's not even out yet. Well, guess what? I'm fucking, I have ESP, motherfuckers. I'm psychic. Rocky's going to fucking die of cancer at the end of the movie. And then they're going to make Creed Part 2, Creed Part 3. They're going to start a whole new saga of Creed, of, of Rocky movies, but with Creed instead. It's the same shit over and over again. It's the same fucking bullshit. But, yeah, I'm sorry about that little tangent there, but I'm just... Just tired of hearing this, man. I'm just tired of hearing about fucking Creed. It's not Rocky, but it is Rocky, but it's it's a spin-off. Well, fuck that. The budget is 35 million. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to make it's going to make money. You know, it is going to make money. Um you know, it's going to be successful because because of the the brand name because it's Rocky, you know. But I don't care. I mean, I I've seen the trailers and stuff, but I just don't care. You know, it's just something I'm not interested in. You know, to me, Rocky Balboa was it. That was it. You know, that was the last movie. Because here I'm reading that, you know, they keep making. You know, again. They keep doing the, the the same fucking trend. Well, we have to reference everything because people forget. People have never seen any of the other Rocky movies, so we have to reference everything from the previous movies. You know, I'm reading here that, you know, Rocky's going to have brain trauma like Rocky Five. Okay, I thought they kind of ignored that with Rocky Balboa. You know, I thought they kind of, like, they didn't ignore it, but they didn't... Um, like make it a a big deal of the of the movie. They hinted at it, but it wasn't a big deal. You know. So yeah, you know, and it's going to be the same shit, you know, they in the trailer, he's running through Philadelphia. Oh gee, we've never seen that before. He's catching a chicken. Oh gee, we've never seen that before. You know, I just watched the first five movies, again, I watch them all the time. I watch the Rocky films all the time because I love them to death. They're great movies. You know, just make a boxing movie. You don't have to make a fucking Rocky movie because Stallone needs that cash grab because his career is in the shitter. I'm sorry about going on a tangent, you know, a rant about Creed, I just, you know, I gotta get my thoughts out there, just, I think Stallone, you know, again, Creed, I mean, it's gonna be successful, um, and people are probably gonna play, praise Stallone, and, you know, maybe he'll get, you know, a little spotlight again, but, I mean, coming up after Creed, he is doing two voiceovers, He's going to be in Ratchet and Clank, which that I would kind of like to see. I do like those video games. It's an animated film, so I look forward to that. And then he's doing a voice in some movie called Animal Crackers, 
which is supposed to come out like next Christmas. And it's about a family whose life is turned upside down when they inherit a rundown circus and a mysterious box of animal crackers which magically change the person who eats them into the animal they have eaten, including monkeys, giraffes, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, see what I did there. They must save the circus from being taken over by their evil uncle who will be voiced by Ian McKellen. So, Ian McKellen, Danny DeVito, Sylvester Stallone, Wallace Shawn, Raven Simone, Patrick Warbutton, Harvey Farstein, Gilbert Gottfried, Tara Strong are all going to be in this movie. And it's people that did Despicable Me. I don't know. I'm just tired of fucking the minions and everything. But, let's look at Stallone's recent track record. To me, his last good movie was Expendables 2. I liked Expendables 2. Bullet to the Head sucked. Um, I don't think Stallone was the problem in the movie. I thought Stallone did good for what he had. But, you know, from the get-go, firing Thomas Jane over stupid racist bullshit and changing the script and, and changing and everything and pushing the movie back and everything, you know, stupid shit. Just stupid shit like that just made me less interested in the film. Um, again, I don't think Stallone was the problem. It was just a shitty film. Um, I can see why it flopped. Escape Plan, Escape Plan was okay. It wasn't a great film. They should have just called it The Tomb, because Escape Plan just sounds generic. It sounds fucking just shitty. It's just a, a directed video film. It's not an action film. It's a, it's a... I guess like a more of a mystery film because it's not a suspense movie, um, but it's not an action film. They you were misled if you thought it was an action film. Um, it made a profit. I mean, it made the budget was fifty million. It made a hundred and thirty-seven million, so it made a profit. But it was okay. I mean, Lock Up was a way better movie. You know, the stuff in Tango and Cash where they're in prison is way better. Um, you know, it's just, I would rather have seen Arnold and Stallone just do a buddy cop film. You know, that would have been way better. Um, Homefront, I know he wrote and he produced Homefront. Homefront was alright. Not a great movie. Grudge Match fucking sucked. It was just, you didn't need a comedy with Delone and Delone. Stallone and De Niro. See, I'm all fucking confused. They should have just made... Uh, they could have made a drama together. Like Copland. You know, they could have just made a movie like that. And that would have been a way better film. Or do an action film together. You know, again, they could do a, a buddy cop film. Not with the comedy, but a serious, you know, buddy cop movie. You know, kind of like the first Lethal Weapon. Um, Grudge Match sucked. It's just a shitty film. And Expendables 3 sucked. I don't need to go on about Expendables 3. I did enough in that. I did like an hour and a half rant on that movie. Reach Me was good. Um, I like that. That was directed video. Had a really good cast in it. Um, Stallone had a small role, which was cool. But um, I really liked that movie. I had a, Like I said, had a really good cast. Liked the idea of the film. Um, I know Stallone went on Kickstarter because the producer, like, left the movie and something like that. But, um, I like the movie. I know it gets a zero on Rotten Tomatoes, but, oh well. I liked it. If I ever find it cheap, I'll pick it up. But I think, I know, I haven't even answered the question really at this point. But I think Stallone should just do, you know, first of all, I think he should go back to writing and directing his films because... I still think the first Expendables was the best. He wrote it and directed it. I think that was the problem with 2 and 3. He just wrote them. He didn't direct them. You know, I think he needs to go back and do that. And I think he should do stuff like Get Carter, where he's older. You know, he's been out of the game for a while, but he comes back and he kicks ass. Like, I know we're never going to see a Cobra 2 or something like that, but, yeah, just do, you know, play a cop who something happened and he comes back and he's got to take care of it, you know, or like, you know, Ram I don't know what's going on with Rambo 5. I guess with, if Creed's successful, 
they'll do a Rambo 5, but don't fucking do Rambo 5. It's not necessary, Stallone. So I don't know what's going on with Stallone. It's just, after Expendables, you know, he just got a big ego again, and, you know, he thinks he's still back in the 80s, you know, and he still thinks he's number one, but it's not how it works. But yeah, I think Stallone should work with uh, better directors because Expendables 3, Patrick Hughes, a guy who directed an independent film, all of a sudden directs Expendables 3. You know, work with better directors and just go, or just direct the movies yourself, Stallone. Just write them and direct them like you used to do. And just make good movies again. It's not hard to make a good movie. Stallone can do it. He's done it many times. You know, do just like Last Stand with Arnold. That kind of idea where you're older but you can still kick ass. No more Rocky films. No more Rambo films. Fucking no more Expendables. I don't give a shit about Expendables 4. How it's going to take place in China. And the Chinese are going to, you know, the Chinese are supporting this film and they're they're backing this movie. I don't fucking care about Expendables 4. Fuck it. Because they're going to fuck up again. It's not like they're going to get Van Damme back, you know, or, you know, they want Hulk Hogan. Not now, because Hulk Hogan fucking got fired from WWE and all this shit. I know Pierce Brosnan said he wants to be in it. They're not going to get fucking Pierce Brosnan. They're not going to get Van Damme. They're not going to get Steven Seagal. They're not going to get Jeff Speakman. You know, they're not going to get Christopher Lambert. They're not going to get the people that deserve to be in these movies. They didn't do it with fucking Expendables 2 and 3, so what makes you think they're going to do it with Expendables 4? I know people are saying, oh, well, it'll happen. It's not going to fucking happen. They didn't do it the last two times. Why do you think they're going to do it this time? It won't happen. I'm sorry. So fuck Expendables 4. I'm done with Expendables. The franchise is now Expendable because they fucked it up. They had a good thing going and they fucked it all up. So fuck Expendables. Again, Stallone, just direct your own movies, write your own movies. You don't need other people. They tried that. Look at Rocky Five. Rocky Five, Stallone. Well, I don't want to direct it because I'm tired. I don't want to direct this time. I like Rocky Five, but if Stallone directed it, it would have been a better movie. So, that's what he needs to do. Moving on, number six. I know you said you will do a video on Shout Factory, but is there any taste that we can see about that? Yeah, um, I know I discussed it in a previous part a little bit, but... Shout Factory fucks up all the time. You know, they act like... And the the fans, you know, people like me and you, most people act like they're the greatest company of all time just because they did the Halloween Blu-ray set and the Power Rangers set and the, the, uh, the Bruce Lee set. But they all had fucking problems. All the sets they released have had problems. The Halloween set, Halloween 4 is out of sync. Halloween... Um, one, th four, and five. It's just the it's the same Blu-rays as before. They didn't do anything new. The Power Rangers set, the the box sets were okay, but when the Legacy set came out, there was issues. The Bruce Lee set, there was issues. You know, other films. Um, you know, they were supposed to release. Uh, what was that? Uh, Schizoid. Schizoid was supposed to come out, and then they couldn't release it for some reason. Jack's back got pushed back. It's like, oh, well, you know, Jack's back gets pushed back, but you can do, you know, now they announced, then look, now they've announced, you know, oh, we're going to do Texas Chainsaw 2. There's already a special edition. Return of the Living Dead. There's already a special edition. What more could you put on there? Species 2 and 3, or spe Species 2, 3, and 4. Did Species need spe Species 2, 3, and 4 need special editions? No, only the first Species was good, the rest sucked. Yeah, you know, um... Ah, uh, fuck. Texas Chainsaw 2 already had a special edition. What else? I mean, it's not like you're going to get Dennis Hopper for an interview. Dennis Hopper's dead. 
It's too late now to get an interview. You know, that's the thing. They wait till it's too late. Like, they live. You know, you mean to tell me that you couldn't get Roddy Piper for a new interview for They Live? You know, Serpent in the Rainbow. Well, it's too late now because Wes Craven's dead. You know, and the shit with Halloween. Oh, you got to buy the 15-disc edition if you want new features for Halloween 4 and 5. I love Halloween 4. Halloween 4 is, I think it's the best sequel with Michael Myers. Um, It's not my favorite. I think Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, the producer's cut, will always be my favorite. Because I just... The producer's cut was the first version that I saw, and I just love the... It just it took forever for that movie to get respect, and now it finally got it. You know, that's just my opinion. But Halloween Four kicks ass, but it was fucking out of sync, and you gotta buy the bonus, the bonus set, the bonus edition to get the new features. Fuck that. Halloween Two, the TV cut, they put it on a DVD. You couldn't have put it on a Blu-ray. You put the TV cut of Halloween One on a Blu-ray, but you couldn't put the TV cut of Halloween Two on a Blu-ray. Fuck that. Mad Max. Okay, they put a new interview with Mel Gibson. Escape from New York. I don't give a... It's not like they put a new interview with Kurt Russell. I don't care. I mean, I'll get it if it's cheap. I got the the poster because I really like the artwork. But that's all I cared about. Seriously, for Return of the Living Dead, what are they going to do? It's not like they're going to put the original music on there. I'll be very surprised if they do. I already... I have the uh, the version with the original music. But what are they going to do for Return of the Living Dead? And some of these other films. Let's look at, you know, and Nightbreed. Like the whole shit with Nightbreed where first they were only going to make like 5,000 copies. Then they made 10,000 and you had to pay $80 just to get the bonus feature disc. Like I don't like that shit. Let's look at, let's look at this here. Halloween 2 and 3, okay, yes. Special editions definitely deserve it. Funhouse. Funhouse is a good movie. Terror Train. Okay, Jamie Lee Curtis. They Live, definitely. Death Valley and the Island. I don't know. I've never seen those. Deadly Blessing, I've never seen. Terror Vision and the Video Dead. Okay, Prison. Okay, I guess, Prison. Phantasm 2, yes, because Phantasm 2 first. Phantasm 2 wasn't on DVD forever. And then Universal released it in a fucking bare bones. Phantasm 2 definitely deserved it because Phantasm 2 is the best Phantasm and it kicks ass. I'm sorry. From Beyond, okay. The Burning, okay. Ninja 3. Ninja 3 didn't need a special edition. Excuse me, I was taking a drink. <clears throat> um, I don't think... I don't actually... I don't even think it has features. So, okay, I mean, that one, at least they put it out, because that was, you know, that one and Enter the Ninja weren't out, but at least they're out now. Howling, okay. Life Force, okay. Fog, I know they added new features, but, you know, you could have got Jamie Lee Curtis, and that's the thing with Halloween, you know, H2O, I'm sorry, my throat's making noises and stuff. H2O, okay, oh wow, we got Jamie Lee Curtis for an interview and a commentary. First of all, the interview, she's not in it that much. Second of all, why couldn't they just do a standalone interview with her and talk about all the movies, talk about all the Halloween movies, and talk about the other horror films she did, you know, stuff like Prom Night, stuff like Terror Train, because she never talks about this stuff. You never hear interviews with Jamie Lee Curtis talking about Halloween and The Fog and all these other great movies that she was in before she was a serious actress. I mean, I know now she writes books and stuff, which is great, and I know she's done a lot of other great films besides 
these horror films, but these are the movies I want to hear about. We've already heard about True Lies and A Fish Called Wanda and Trading Places and all these other movies she's done. I want to hear about the ones that gave her a career. Halloween, The Fog, Terror Train, Prom Night, Road Games. I want to hear about those movies. So why couldn't they ask her when they did the interview? Swamp Thing, why couldn't you put the uncut version of Swamp Thing on there? It's got boobies. So fucking what? All these other movies on here have nudity. I Come in Peace. They fucked that up. Where are the fucking features? There's no features on there. You get a 20 minute interview and that's it. Day of the Dead, they already did a special edition. I know they added new stuff, but they already did one. Prince of Darkness, never thought I'd see a special edition of that. Psycho 2 and 3, never thought I'd see a special edition of those. Amityville, they already did features, I know, for the first film. Body Bags with John Carpenter, or John Carpenter's bot with John Carpenter is in the film. Okay, Assault on Precinct 13, okay. Night of the Comet, okay. Night of the Demons, okay. But some of these other films, did they need special editions? No. Dark Man, at least Liam Neeson was on there. Evil Speak, okay. I like Evil Speak. Sleepaway Camp, okay. Slumber Party Massacre, okay. These are cult films. Lake Placid, yeah. Ginger Snaps, yeah. Leviathan, yeah. Although they shit all over the movie. Pumpkinhead, yeah. But some of these other films don't deserve special editions. They didn't need a special edition Blu-ray. Like Pumpkinhead 2. You couldn't get some features on Pumpkinhead 2? Monkey Shines, okay. Dark Half, yeah. Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror, yeah. Lord of Illusions, yes. Supernova, okay. Yeah, Once Bitten, everyone made a big deal because it was on a double feature with Love at First Bite. And, you know, Love at First Bite had the original song that wasn't on the DVD because everybody got all upset. But, you know, Once Bitten didn't get anything besides a fucking trailer. I love Once Bitten. It's a funny movie. It's cool to see Jim Carrey before he was famous. But no features. I know you're not going to get Jim Carrey for an interview because he's busy. But you could have got some of the other people. Phantom of the Opera with Robert Englund? Yeah, I like that movie. I would like to pick that one up. The Babadook, or whatever. Did that need features? No. Does fucking Human Centipede need features? No. Some of these, they just do it because people will buy it because it's Shout Factory. Dog Soldiers took fucking forever. It took over a year to come out. It was always an issue. Whatever. I know everyone's coming in their pants because of Army of Darkness. Great, you know, I'll get it eventually. I'm not in a rush. But what about, you know, other... F there's other. There's so many other films out there, so many other horror films that should have features that don't. Like, do a fucking Friday the 13th box set because the features, and frankly, suck for Friday the 13th. I don't get it. But... Shout Factory, I'm sorry, Shout Factory can kiss my ass. You know, I buy a lot of their stuff because they do release good stuff. But they fuck up all the time. And they, re you know, they release stuff that doesn't, you know, we didn't need a lot of these collector's edition Blu-rays of shit. You know, they keep fucking up, like seriously. You know, VR Troopers, they released, you know, they... We're going to do the last DVD, and then a week before it came out, oh no, it's canceled. And then a year and a half later, oh, now we're going to release it, Beetleborgs. Two years later, oh, we're going to release that now. That'll come out now. Just put the shit out there for people. They buy it, they buy it. If they don't, they don't. It's as simple as that. So, I mean, I don't want to go too far because there's other questions but in all honesty, fuck Shout Factory. You know, release good stuff. Stop doing mediocre stuff. And that's the thing. Again, I said it before and I'll say it again. Oh, you know, everyone wants to use this fucking excuse. Oh, well, Fabio, it's better than nothing. 
It's better than nothing. At least we got that. I'm tired of that fucking excuse. Enough. It's better than nothing. No. Just do better. It's simple as that. So moving on. Number seven. I know you're very busy. And I enjoyed your video game playthroughs from before. What games would you like to do in the future, if any? I would love to do more. Um, the problem, from my standpoint, is they didn't get a lot of views. Um, so I don't really... F I know people have told me they like them. So that's probably why I'll keep doing them. But I just... You know, people weren't watching them. You know, so that's why I didn't do more at the time. Um, I would like to do more. I would like to do, like, finish the... I know I did Siphon Filter 1 and 2. I'd like to finish those games. And there's so many games that I can do. And some I won't even do full playthroughs. But maybe I'll just play through a game for a while. You know, because there's some games I'm good at. There's some games I'm not good at. So, um, you know, I would do just different... Diff try different things. Um, so there's so many games. Like I would like to do some of the Mario Brothers games, some of the Power Ranger games, some of the Ninja Turtle games. Um, there's a lot of different ones I would like to do. Um, maybe some sports games that I have. I'm not, you know, like NBA Jam for Super Nintendo. Just play through that because that's just a, a fun game. It's just a very fun game. Um, so I would like to do more of those. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. But um, maybe one day I will uh, get back into those. But again, there was the problem was from my standpoint, there just wasn't an interest. You know, people were just not interested in those. So, oh well. But one day. Uh, number eight. Any thoughts to doing a commentary over a movie like others have on YouTube, uh, whether recording yourself audio-wise, etc thought about it um i was actually going to do since this past year it's kind of too late now since it's already in november um i was going to do the ninja turtles film from the 90s the original one because it was the 25th anniversary um but at the last minute i decided to not do it because i, I didn't announce it i wasn't sure how people were going to react to it but maybe one day um i will do because I would just do it kind of like this, like a podcast type of thing. I would just put a a picture up and then record me watching the movie. That way, I don't get in trouble for copyright and stuff. Cause I don't need that shit. You know, I don't. I hate that shit. I don't need that shit. Not dealing with it. So I would do it that way, and then I would just tell people, okay, now I'm starting the movie in three, two, one. You know, something like that. But maybe one day. Maybe one day um, I'll, you know, just kind of do um, a movie. Just kind of a test. Maybe, I don't know what kind of a movie I would pick. Maybe something like Halloween or Friday the 13th or, you know, whatever. Just any kind of movie. And uh, just do that like as a test video to see if people like it. And if people like it, I'll do more. Um, so yeah, one day I would like to do those. Uh, number nine, what are your thoughts on the current state of the action genre? I did a video long ago about the action genre, and my thoughts are the same as in that video. Like, I'm not going to go too long on this one, um, but the action genre is dead in the water. Like, there's just no action genre. Um, the superhero films have taken over. The remakes, the reboots, the remasters, the reimaginings, the, it's not a remake, but it is a remake, the backdoor shit, all this has taken over. Um, so when we do get an action film, like uh, The Last Stand or Sabotage or whatever, it flops because people don't want to see those movies anymore. Um, you know, people aren't interested in those movies anymore. So when they do something like that, and again, dread, um, when they do a movie like that, nobody gives a fuck, and that's why they flop. Um, you know, the the perception of an action film today is a comic book film, a superhero film, uh, something with Channing Tatum or whatever. You know, I like Channing Tatum in stuff like 
21 Jump Street, and I liked White House then. I was very surprised with that film. I really enjoyed it. But, you know, there's no true action films anymore. The only way you're going to get true action films is direct video But even those are hit and miss. Uh, Steven Seagal, it's hit and miss. He'll do a decent one. He'll do a bunch of shitty ones. He'll do a good one, and then it's back to the shitty ones. Um, Van Damme will do good ones, and then he'll do a shitty one like Pound of Flesh. Um, but even then, uh, Van Damme is slowing down. You know, he's doing, you know, he did, uh, for a while there, all he did was play bad guys. You know, he was doing cameos in movies. He was doing comedy films. You know, so Van Damme's kind of mixing it up a little bit. You know, but there's been some good direct video ones, but, you know, again, there's always bad ones, too. So the action genre sucks. You know, again, when they try to do something like an old school type of action film, it flops. You know, because nobody likes that. Nobody cares about that. Um, you know, occasionally there will be a decent one like White House Down, The Gunman with Sean Penn I thought was decent. You know, occasionally there will be something decent. But for the most part, you know, I don't know why they keep making them because they're not making money. They're flopping and no one cares. You know, it's it's sad, but it's true. You know, the action genre made billions of dollars for a while. You know, throughout the 80s and the 90s, it was the go-to genre. You know, and then when you had guys like Tom Cruise and, you know, serious actors doing it, it made money too. Nicolas Cage, you know, when those guys started doing action films, those movies made money. Those were successful. And some of those have been very good. There's been some very good action films from guys like that. But now it's just nobody gives a fuck unless it's Marvel or it's a remake or it's got someone like Channing Tatum, someone who's not a legitimate action star like Steven Seagal or Chuck Norris or Jackie Chan or whoever, you know. It's just in the shitter and it's not going to improve. It's not going to get any better. The, I think the action films have had their time. They're not coming back. You know, so that's why I just watch the old ones, because that's all that matters, to me at least. You know, that's just my opinion on that subject. And the last question from Matt, <clears throat> two-parter. Uh, one, did you ever check out that Ninja Turtles documentary that came out a year or so ago? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? And the second part is, uh, why is the 2003 cartoon so ignored? and thrown under the bus like it has been for the longest time. First part of the question, I have not seen Turtle Power, I believe that's what it's called. Um, to be honest, I ha again, I have no interest in seeing it. I really do not. Um, unless it's... Let me see if it's on Netflix. The DVD Netflix, not the streaming. It's probably on the streaming, but... Whatever, let's try that again. Okay. All right. I I just I've heard, you know, I know Matt, you reviewed it and just I heard so many bad things and I know people liked it. I know people said that they liked it and they thought it was good and everything. It's not on Netflix. That's okay. Um you know, and they cut so much out of it apparently and they they didn't talk that much about a lot of things and stuff, but you know, it's just, it's not definitive if you don't talk about everything, you know. And, and documentaries like Crystal Lake Memories and uh, Never Sleep Again, those are definitive because they talked about everything about those uh, sagas, those films, you know. So it can't be definitive if you don't talk about everything, and... I mean, a part of me wants to see it, but again, it's like I I heard so many bad things. Why would I waste my time when I would just be disappointed? So maybe one day if I can find it on a download or find it cheap just to watch it and then probably get rid of it and stuff like that. But yeah, I really just have no interest in seeing it. You know, I'd rather just talk with other Ninja Turtle fans about why we love it and things that we have in our collection and stuff like that. I don't need to see a documentary that claims to be the definitive documentary 
the definitive story when I can just find out information on my own through various sources. That's just how I look at it. And the second part of the question, I, I don't understand why the 2003 cartoon gets ignored. Um, I love it. I think it's... Uh, yeah, I would say it's the best cartoon because... It was mature. It was serious. I know. Well, the first, the first five seasons, anyway, and then season six and seven, they kind of went in uh, different directions. But um, I really enjoyed it. Now, when it first came on, I remember watching the first couple episodes, and then I just kind of tuned out because at that time. Um, I was just trying to get into different things. I was 11 at the time, so I was, you know, trying to grow up and trying to get out of Ninja Turtles and move on to other things, which is kind of weird because I still watch Power Rangers for another year and a half, so I don't know how that worked out, but it did. <laughs> um, but, oh well, sorry, Matt. <laughs> but, um, but I love it. I think it was great. The first, uh, the first three th the first three seasons I thought were really good. Season four was cool. Um, I know that's when they kind of made it. Uh, not really season four, but season the first three I thought were the best. Season four I thought was good. Uh, season five that was Ninja Tribunal, so they were doing some different things in there. Season six they went into the future. That was okay. And season seven. Wasn't the biggest fan of the last season because they, you know, that's when they changed the animation and and all that stuff. Wasn't a big fan of that. But I, I don't get it. I just don't get why it's it's shit on. Um, I know when it for a long time when it first came on and a couple the first couple years it was on, people loved it. That's all people talked about. They said it was the best Ninja Turtles cartoon. You know, it's what the '80s series should have been. But it was a different time, so that wouldn't have happened anyway. And then, I think, like, after the first four or five seasons, nobody talked about it anymore. And then they did the CGI movie, and people didn't care about that. You know, and then it was kind of just quiet for a while. You know, then they started doing the IDW comics, and then they announced this new cartoon, and unfortunately this new the remake and the next movie that's coming out. And then now it's all about that stuff. And, you know, again, people still talk about the three live action films. People still talk about the original comics and the original cartoon. But the 2003 show, the next mutation, all that kind of stuff just gets thrown under the bus. Nobody cares. Um, I don't understand why. I mean, now people will come up with excuses to shit on it, but these are the people that loved it 10 years ago when it was on, when it was new. So I don't understand that. I don't get why the show gets shit on. Um, I know they fucked up with the DVDs, but, you know, the 2003 cartoon was really good. It was serious like the comics. I mean, there was humor and stuff, obviously, with Mikey and other people. Excuse me. But, you know, I really enjoyed it. I still enjoy it. I watched it. I watched the whole thing the first time last year, and, I mean, I had to watch him out of order and shit. It's fucking confusing, but um, maybe one day I'll make my own set of DVDs where they're in order. Um, I don't know, maybe, because I have all the seasons. But I don't get it, and I don't—I do not get why it gets shit on. Turtles Forever was an awesome movie. It's one of my favorite animated films. Like I said in I think part one of this Q and A, someone had asked. I said Turtles Forever was one of my favorites. Um, I don't, I don't get it. I just, I, I do not understand it. You know, and the people that say it sucks and it's shit, I'm sorry, but go fuck yourselves. You're wrong, because it's an awesome cartoon. Maybe you should actually watch the cartoon instead of listening to what other people say. So, the 2003 cartoon rocks. I don't get why people shit on it, but fuck them. I enjoy it. You enjoy it. There's people out there that love it. So, that's great. I'm going to go hang with those people, and we'll talk about it. You know, but I love it. Other people should too. So thank you, Matt, for sending in those questions. And we are going to be moving on now to the last set of questions from Zero Cool 1389, aka John, good friend of mine, who sent in ten questions. Number one, 
uh, thoughts on why they stopped the Survivor Series anthology DVDs post-1996. I know the screw job was a year later. That's one aspect of it. And some will bring up the network. Just wondering if you feel there's more to it. Um, from what I remember hearing, I heard that the sales were not very good. Um, which Survivor Series, I, I love the concept of Survivor Series. I think it's interesting. I liked how for the first bunch it was just the Survivor Series matches and then they started adding other stuff on there. And I know now I think they only do like one or two uh, Survivor Series matches, the the actual like tag matches. So I do feel that the pay-per-view itself gets shit on because I know at one point they wanted to get rid of it. Um, you know, they wanted to get rid of Survivor Series and, and put something else in, and a lot of people were upset. They're like, no, you can't do that, and you can't, you know. You can't get rid of Survivor Series. It's a, it's a, it was it's a great pay-per-view. You know, and they, I mean, Royal Rumble, they really hype up. WrestleMania, obviously. SummerSlam, they do hype up, but I don't think as much as they used to. And, like, Survivor Series, they don't give a shit about Survivor Series anymore. Like, I, I just, I don't understand that. But, from what I heard, that the sales were just really low. Like, the first two volumes did not sell at all. Like, people did not buy them. And that's why they, you know, got rid of them. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's the truth or not. Um, the Montreal screw job, like the whole thing with the Montreal screw job, I just wish people would stop fucking talking about it. It was, that was almost 20 years ago. Let's move on. Seriously, people are still bitching about the fucking Survivor, you know, Survivor Series 97 and the Montreal screw job. Oh my god, Bret Hart. Oh my god, they they rang the bell and oh my god. Yeah, you know, Bret Hart, he didn't lose the title. And, eh, like, I'm just so fucking tired of hearing about it. Let's grow the fuck up, people. It was 20 years ago. Move on. Sorry, but, you know, and that that's the whole thing about the, the screw job. I mean, they've done so many DVDs and specials and interviews and stuff about this, the screw job, so... That can't be true on that part. I know someone, I was reading somewhere that, well, Owen Hart's in the next one, the next couple. He was in 97 and 98. Well, he's in 96. I know he was in 96. I'm sure he was in 95 and 94. 93. Okay, hold on. All right, Owen Hart was on 96. Yes, he wrestled in the second match with British Bulldog and the New Rockers against Doug Furness, Phil LaFon, and the Godwins. Okay. He was on 95 because he was on Team Yokozuna versus Team Shawn Michaels. Okay. And he was... I know he was in 94 because... Yeah. Because he was in Bob Backlund's corner and he threw the towel in for Bret Hart when they did that throw in the towel match. And I think he was in 93. Yes, he was in 93 because that's when him and Bret started their feud which would um, go into WrestleMania 10 the next year. And SummerSlam 94. Yep, that's right. So yeah, so Owen Hart was in a bunch of them. Because I heard, like, his wife found out and, and she sued WWE again. Like, she's always doing when she needs money. So that tells you something right there. Um, so I heard that. I heard the sales. And I also heard that Chris Benoit was on there. But Chris Benoit is on the network. You know, so there you go. So I think that it was either the sales weren't as much as they were hoping and... You know, I just, it's probably laziness too. When did those sets come out? 2009. So it's just probably believe lazy, huh, laziness because 2009, you know, they were moving into the PG era, the reality era, whatever. And, you know, then they were getting ready to release these, the uh, Attitude Era, like DVDs. So that could have been a reason. I don't know if that is the reason, but that could have been one of the reasons. But I think it was either just. Um, 
you know, the sales and just WWE being lazy, like usual, like just so lazy when it comes to this. They'll put it on the, it's, they're probably all on the network, but fuck the network, you know. I mean, I have most of them on, I have all up to, I think I have all up to 99. I think I have all those on VHS, the original versions and stuff. And then I think I have 2003 on DVD. I think that's all the ones I have. But yeah, I think it's just, again, it probably they probably did not sell. That's probably why they stopped them. And then they probably just uh, got lazy. You know, they probably just got lazy. Number two, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of action directors? I can never remember how many are on Mount Rushmore. So I'm going to look that up just to be sure. I think it's four. I don't know. I don't care. I'm never going to go there, so... It is four. So, four action movie directors. Well, John Woo would definitely be up there. John McTiernan would definitely be up there. Paul Verhoeven would be up there. Hmm. And probably James Cameron back in the day, like Terminator, Aliens, that era. So, yeah, those four guys I think would be up there. Number three, do you feel there's a problem in this current industry? I'm sorry if I'm going too fast, but yeah, just those four guys on that one. Um, number three, I'm sorry. Number three, do you feel there's a problem in this current industry, this agenda of smearing the past because we talk high of how things used to be? Nowadays, it's this attitude of throwing stones at the classics. But for all the failures, the mediocrity of today via endless remakes, reboots, prequels, there is no strive for better, no effort, and no one takes accountability for the bad. Yes, I've, you know, I talked about that before but yes there is a huge problem and it's again it's not just with movies it's with everything look at wrestling you know look at you know this whole shit with Hulk Hogan you know the whole shit with John Cena you know John Cena for the past 10 fucking years it's been John Cena you know music it's the same way all these classic rock bands I don't call it classic rock because good music is not classic. Good music is class. <laughs> good music is good music. I'm sorry. But, you know, and all these bands, well, that album sucked and I didn't like him and blah, blah, you know, all these bands going back and forth. But people are like that too. You know, people, you know, if somebody did something wrong like two years ago, it's erased. It doesn't matter. You know, and people are always like, oh man, I wish things were like they used to be. I wish it was like the, the good old days. You know, and yeah, we throw stones at, at the classics. You know, well, oh, that's old, and that's that was made in the 80s, so that doesn't count. That's not good. You know, it's old. Fuck that. You know, and yeah, all these, you know, look at all these movies that are flopping. You know, there's no, you know, if it, like Sabotage, Sabotage flopped, but they didn't say anything about it. It just flopped. The Last Stand flopped. They didn't say anything about it. They're just like, uh, oh well, whatever. Who cares? We'll make it up in the DVD and the Blu-ray sales or the Red Box sales or whatever or the Netflix views, whatever. Stupid shit like that. Um, yeah, you know. And again, I, I said this earlier in this part. You know, it's just remake after remake after remake, reboot after reboot after reboot, reimagining after reimagining, reimagining, reversion after reversion after reversion, prequel after prequel after prequel, sequel after sequel after sequel. It's just the same shit. You know, again, they don't want to be different. They don't want to try to be cool and do something against the grain, against the flow. You know, they just want to follow the sheeple. They want to follow the trend. And you're right. There is no strive. And that again, there's no strive in life. People don't want to do anything better. People want to stay in the flow. People want to just follow the leader. They don't want to take effort. 
And yes, the biggest problem in life is accountability. No one wants to take accountability for anything. You know, and particularly movies, you know, look at a movie like John Carter. A shitty film. $200 million budget. I can't talk. $200 million budget. Flopped. Did anyone take accountability? Did anyone say anything? No. The Lone Ranger. Shitty film. Johnny Depp is fucking Tonto because that makes sense. Flop. Did anyone say anything? No. So, it's just... It's, again, you know, like I said, it's just, well, here it is. If you don't like it, fuck you. If you like it, cool, great, awesome. You know, if you have something bad to say about it, you're not cool, you're not in the crowd, fuck you, you're wrong. You know, we'll take to the keyboard and attack you for it, because that's all we're good for. Because we have no balls, we have to attack people through the keyboard. You know, and again, it's not just movies, it's with life. It is just with life. And I'm always going to talk about this, because, you know, I'm in the minority... I know some of my friends are on here and people that watch my videos and stuff. And it's just, we've had enough. You know, we have had enough of this. We are tired of it. Hollywood and just general, everybody in general, need to wake the fuck up and make a change. Because we're tired of it. You know, we're tired of this shit. Just do better. You know? Take chances. You know, make mistakes. Get messy. You know, like Miss Frizzle used to say from... Uh, Magic School Bus, you know, or The Sandlot, you know, like Scotty's mom, you know, Small's mom said in The Sandlot, you know, get dirty, you know, yeah, that's what these films are missing, they're, get down and dirty, do something different, but again, it'll never happen, because we're, we're so stuck in this, this mediocrity bullshit, this, well, you know, it is what it is, and, you know, it's, uh, it's better than nothing. I'm tired of hearing that excuse. Motherfuckers, I'm tired of it. So, moving on, because I'll be here all day. Uh, number four, thoughts on the Ghostbusters reboot and Rick Moranis turning down a cameo. He did the right thing, in my opinion. I agree. Rick Moranis is the man. Rick Moranis has always been the man. I love him. Um, I wish he would do more. I know um, he did a recent interview, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I understand why Rick Moranis left Hollywood. Number one, his wife died, unfortunately. I feel terrible for that. He had to raise his kids because his kids were still very young. So I get that part. And he was probably just tired of making movies. I think that a lot of actors, um, you know, like Emilio Estevez, you know, me and John and Wildman did a podcast about Emilio Estevez. I think that a lot of people, you know, they reach a certain point, a lot of actors I mean, they reach a certain point in their careers where they've done a bunch of movies, some good, uh, some not so good or whatever, and they make good money and they are financially well to where they get up and they're like, well, you know what? I've done enough, I can take a break, I can relax, I can spend time with my kids, I can do whatever, you know, I can do whatever I want, I can go make music, whatever. And I I think that's what a lot of these actors do. And I don't blame them, I really don't blame them, you know, I don't blame why actors leave the Hollywood system, because they get tired of it. You know, they get tired of it, and I feel them. You know, I think that Rick Moranis, I think one of the reasons why he left was that. You know, I think that, you know, unfortunately his wife died. I get that. You know, I'm sorry that that happened. Um, You know, and I understand he had to take care of his kids. You got to do what you got to do. You know, he did the right thing. You know, he he took care of his family. That's what that's what matters. You know, and he said, you know, he didn't miss it. And th- there you go. He said that he's being honest, you know, and I love Rick Moranis. I got nothing but respect for him. I love the guy. I've always been a big fan of Rick Moranis because he's got that natural 
presence. He's like your dad or your uncle or a guy you know. He's like that normal guy, and that's why I've always been a huge fan of him. I I love Rick Moranis. I would love to meet him. You know, I would love to meet him and shake his hand and thank him. Um, you know, and he's done great movies. Strange Brew, you know, the McKenzie Brothers, great stuff. Ghostbusters, he was in Brewster's Millions, Spaceballs, Little Shop of Horrors, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Flintstones, Little Giants. You know, he was, he's been in a bunch of movies that were good. You know, he was on um, Second City TV. He was on Saturday Night Live for a couple episodes. You know, I love Rick Moranis. And yeah, he definitely made the right decision on that. And the first part of the question, um, you know, what are my thoughts on this reboot? I do have, I know I keep saying this, but I do have a video coming up about this. Um, so I don't want to get too into that because, like I said, there is a video coming up. But fuck it, you know, honestly, it's just not, it's not needed. You know, like Rick Moranis said, why am I going to do work one day on something I did 30 years ago. Exactly. It's not needed. It's not wanted. I know people support it. If you support it, fine. You know, you go spend your money and see it. I'm not. You know, just because you want to see it doesn't mean I have to see it. You know, and again, like the previous question, um, you know, that's the problem. Another big problem is everyone has this elitist attitude. Well, I like it, so you have to like it. And if you don't like it, you're wrong. No, fuck that shit. And fuck you for thinking that way. But, you know, Ghostbusters reboot, the only reason why they did it is because Harold Ramis died. Um, which is, you know, just fucking low. It's just low. I'm sorry. Hollywood, fuck you. Seriously, that is just low. And, you know, this shit with Bill Murray... Well, I don't want to do Ghostbusters 3, but I'll do this remake and me and Harold Ramis made up, which I don't believe that one bit. You know, it's just not needed. It's not wanted. I know people are supporting it, whatever. It has nothing to do with the all-female cast. It's just, we don't need it. It's just not needed. I don't want to see it. I know a lot of other people don't want to see it. It's just, I don't give a fuck. I do not give a fuck. I'm sorry. And Rick Moranis did the right thing. God bless him. I love Rick Moranis. I would love for him to come back and do uh, a big budget movie, you know. So, fuck Ghostbusters remake. <laughs> Number five, <laughs> top six Bill Murray films. Well, I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right, so let me pull up... Uh, yeah, and all this shit. Oh, processed meat causes cancer. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'll just stop eating meat altogether. All right. I, John, you just had to make me talk about Bill Murray. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm just. I'm kidding. I'm just joking around. But Bill Murray, um, again, another guy like Bruce Willis, where I've always been a big fan of Bill Murray. Um, I've always loved Bill Murray. I think he's a great actor, but at the same time, he's a dick. I'm sorry, it's just the shit with Harold Ramis, you know, he was mad at Harold Ramis for just the dumbest shit. Um, I know when they did Groundhog's Day, he had an issue, he had an attitude with him. Um, I don't know, and I know he like he'll do cool things where he'll like show up at places and just like photobomb people and goof around and that's cool you know but just I hear all this shit about Bill Murray being a dick and again like with Bruce Willis it's just you know it it just really turns me off you know really just I lose a lot of respect you know all this shit like where um you know when they were filming Scrooge like he didn't like Richard Donner and Richard Donner didn't like him. Him and Richard Dreyfus didn't get along. Him and Lucy Liu didn't get along. But apparently they made up and everything. But, I mean, I like his movies, but he just seems like a dick. So, six Bill Murray films. Uh, my favorite has always been Ghostbusters. I think that's his definitive role. Um, you know, it's just, to me, that... When I think of Bill Murray, I immediately think of Ghostbusters. I just think that's his best movie. 
I know people would probably say something else, but that's just me. You know, I just, you know, Ghostbusters is where it's at for me. Um, then I would probably say Stripes. I think Stripes is a hilarious movie. Great cast in the movie. A lot of great people in that movie. Just a lot of fun. Uh, just a great movie in my opinion. Uh, then three would be Meatballs. Um, I've always loved Meatballs. Um, another fun movie. Just summer camp. You know, I always like summer camp films because I never went to summer camp as a kid. Um, that's one thing I never did, but I've always liked summer camp films. I think Bill Murray has great dialogue, like when he's talking to the reporter about sexual awareness week, and, you know, it just doesn't matter. You know, great scene. Um, then four would be What About Bob. I've really enjoyed that film. Um, just so goofy. He was so goofy in that movie. Um, you know, just afraid of everything and you know baby steps to the door baby steps to the window baby steps to the elevator you know I have Tourette's what do you mean you have Tourette's god damn it shithead um and then he says I think he says twat <laughs> yeah like when he's going off there's two people in this world two kinds of people in this world those that like Neil Diamond and those that don't my ex-wife loves him. I love What About Bob. Great film. Five would be Caddyshack. Um, I know Caddyshack, like Ghostbusters, is an, <laughs> is an ensemble film. Um, but I love Caddyshack. I thought he was great. You know, License to Kill Gophers. Granted by the United Nations. Hey, Lama. A little compensation for my services. Thought he was great. Caddyshack is just a great film. One of the best comedy films of all time, without a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, just love Caddyshack. Rodney Dangerfield was great. Everybody was great. Chevy Chase, everybody was great in that movie. But Bill Murray particularly was great. And six, I would probably say Kingpin. I know he's not the star, but he's the bad guy. Um, but I thought he was great in it, and that's probably how he really is. <laughs> He's probably a dick like that in real life. Um, I uh, Honorable mention would probably be The Man Who Knew Too Little. I think it's a funny movie. Um, Scrooged I liked, uh, great movie, but I'm just it's not in the top ten or whatever for me. Or top six, I'm sorry. Loved him in Space Jam. Never saw... Actually, Wild Things has been forever. Never saw Rushmore. I know people will shoot me for that. Charlie's Angels was kind of meh. Never got into those. Never saw Royal Tenenbaums or Lost in Translation or these dramatic films he's done. Maybe I'll check him out at some point. Just haven't got around to seeing him. And I know he gets a lot of praise for these movies and he's won awards and stuff. But I want to watch... Bill Murray when he was funny, you know. I want to watch stuff like Ghostbusters and Caddyshack and Stripes, that kind of stuff. You know, those are the ones I like the most. Um, I'm sure he's a great dramatic actor, but I like other stuff. So, yep. Moving on, uh, number six. What are your thoughts on Raw hitting a 2.2 rating, as in Monday Night Raw? Um, I don't see how anyone can justify this. At some point, the network has to open their eyes and see Vince McMahon is poison for the product. I agree. Um, I don't know specifics on a 2.2. I think that's 2 million. I don't know. Um, I'm not an expert on television ratings. But, you know, wrestling, I think, you know, the ratings have been going down for a while. This isn't new. I think when Benoit died, you know, I think that a lot of people started turning off wrestling. I honestly think that. And just shoving fucking John Cena down our throats for 10 goddamn fucking years turns the ratings off and just, you know, the USA Network doesn't care because they, you know, WWE, WWF back in the day and USA Network have been together forever. I know they for a couple years they switched to Spike or it was TNN and then it was Spike but they've been on the USA Network forever. You know. 
Um, but a 2.2, like, you know, people are like, oh, that's okay, the ratings don't matter. No, they do fucking matter. And that's the thing, like, you know, again, like I keep saying, you know, oh, well, that's it, you know, that's all you get, you know, like it or leave it, and, you know, we're not going to try anymore, and, you know, that's the best that we can do, and, you know, it's just, they don't give a shit, you know, because they know, you know, they think that people are stupid. They think the wrestling fans are stupid. Okay, some of us are, some of us aren't. You know, all you gotta do is go on YouTube and look at comments. That's what I say all the time, because it's, it's the truth. Anybody will tell you, it's, it's the truth. Um, you know, but they know that people don't give a fuck about WWE. They know that people don't care about the, sh- the shitty product that they're shoving us. Okay, Seth Rollins is alright. Not a great champion, but he's okay. You know, but they don't want to see fucking John Cena. And I think a lot of people, I know he's not wrestling right now, but I know a lot of people got tired of fucking Daniel Bryan, including me. You know? It's just they just keep re. It's the same stories as before. It's the same shit. That's what they do week in, week out, pay per view after pay per view, and they do the same fucking stupid finishes because. Last year at WrestleMania, when Brock Lesnar broke the streak, it was the same fucking ending as the first Hell in a Cell match they did in 2002. But people are stupid, and they don't fucking remember this shit. But, I mean, I checked out a long time ago on wrestling. I don't give a fuck about wrestling anymore. I'm just going to watch the DVDs that I have and the VHS tapes that I still have. You know, Vince McMahon is fucking old and senile. He has no idea what he's doing. He still thinks it's 1985. You know, it's the rock and wrestling era. You know, he doesn't give a shit. He's, what, 70? Close to 70? And it's the same goddamn fucking show, week in, week out. John Cena! Yeah, yeah, I'm John Cena. I can rap. But I look like crap. You got my belt, dog. I'm coming to get my belt, dog. And then Triple H. I'm Triple H. Yeah, I'm Vince McMahon's son-in-law. Yeah. Stephanie is my wife. This is the same story we did 15 years ago. Yeah. And Seth Rollins, you know, wins on a on a count out or whatever. Randy Orton wins on a count out. You know, Sheamus and all these other talented guys, they don't fucking do jack shit with. It is the same goddamn show every fucking week. Enough! Ric Flair comes out. Woo! Woo! Get the WWE Network! Woo! Woo! Fuck your network. And fuck wrestling. I'm, I'm Wrestling is dead. There is no more wrestling. It sucks. All of it sucks. I'm sorry. All of wrestling sucks. But I'm done talking about it because no one's listening. Not that I don't mean you guys. I mean that no one's listening to what people are saying because it's obviously still the fucking same. Number seven, cliffhanger or demolition, man? I have to say demolition, man. Um, I grew up, I actually grew up with both films, but I've always liked Demolition Man more because I like, West. I love Wesley Snipes as the villain. I think you have a really solid cast. You have Sandra Bullock, you have Dennis Leary, again, Wesley Snipes, um, Stallone, you have little cameos from people like Rob Schneider, Jack Black. Um, I just love the idea of the future and how everyone's like the Brady Bunch, like Wesley Snipes said in the movie. This world has become a pussy-whipped Brady Bunch version of itself. That's who you remind me of. A evil Mr. Rogers. You know. And none of them motherfuckers from New York. They are too uptight. <laughs> I just, I love Demolition, man. I used to watch it all the time on TV when I was younger. Um, I have it on 
like with most Stallone films, I have it on VHS, Laserdisc, DVD. Would love to pick up the Blu-ray at some point. Would love to see a special edition. I would love to see a lot of the deleted scenes. Uh, maybe an interview with Wesley Snipes and Stallone if they want to sit down and talk about it. Love Demolition Man. Cliffhanger is great. Cliffhanger is definitely one of the best action films of the 90s. Definitely one of uh, Stallone's best films, one of my favorites. But I have to say Demolition Man because I uh, love the concept a little bit more. I love, you know, how Stallone is this legendary renegade cop, the Demolition Man. You know, you don't fuck with John Spartan. You know, he'll fuck you up and then some. You know, I love Wesley Snipes as the villain. I think the action sequences are great. The movie's very smart. The dialogue is great. I think it's hilarious. Um, it's just very smartly written. It's just a great movie. Um, Demolition Man kicks ass, and so does Cliffhanger, but I like Demolition Man a little bit more. Um, always been my favorite Stallone film. Number eight, thoughts on Die Hard 6 sequel slash prequel. And dot, 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 how would you do Die Hard 6? I think someone had already asked me this, but this one's a little bit more in-depth. Um, the idea of a sequel slash prequel never works in Hollywood. They have tried to do this idea several times, and I can't think of a good movie where it worked. Um, I mean, I can't remember, but I'm just done with Die Hard. You know, like I said earlier in this video... You know, fuck Bruce Willis. There doesn't need to be a Die Hard 6. You know, there really does not because A Good Day to Die Hard sucked. It was just a shitty film. Um, I mean, it doesn't piss me off. Like, I, like it, when I review the film, I know I did like a first reaction video when I first saw it in theaters. Um, it's not going to be like me yelling and screaming because, I mean, it, it, the movie pissed me off because... I was looking forward to it because it's Die Hard. But, you know, it's just a shitty film. You know, just a bad fucking movie. No effort. John Moore sucks as a director. Skip Wood sucks as a writer. Bruce Willis was just phoning it in, but that's more for another time. You don't need it. I know people are like, well, Len Wiseman is directing it. Okay, Len Wiseman, when he when they first announced that he was directing Live Free or Die Hard, everybody was pissed off. They're like, oh! Oh my god, he directed Underworld. Oh, it's going to suck. Then it was a great movie, so fuck off. I know people are shitting on Live Free or Die Hard now, but I still think it's a great movie. It was great back in 2007 when it came out, and it's great now, almost 10 years later. Which, that's hard to believe. It's almost 10 years old. Um, but Time flies when you're having fun. But, I, I think it's completely unnecessary. I don't want to see... Bruce Willis, you know, like a young... It's not going to be him, but I don't want to see a young John McClane. They already did that with the comic book. I'd rather just read the comic book. So it's just completely unnecessary. I don't give a shit. I don't care about Die Hard anymore. I'll watch the first four movies, and I'll play Die Hard Trilogy and Die Hard Trilogy 2, because those were really fun games. And I did like Die Hard Vendetta for the GameCube. I have that. Maybe I'll do a playthrough of that. Hard game in some parts, but um, I like it. You know, but how would I do Die Hard 6? If it was up to me. Well, I'd go full circle. I would go back to Los Angeles where it all started in the Nakitomi building. Um, I would have, because I know a lot of people are like, well, he should go to Japan and get some award. I'd rather him just go back to Nakatomi and get the award there and like terrorists take over maybe it's like Han like in the in Die Hard Vendetta the video game it was Hans Gruber's son that was the bad guy like that would be cool like I don't know if it, if you should do Hans Gruber's son um but like that kind of idea you know or maybe a copycat like that's an idea they haven't done in a long long time a copycat idea um but that's what I would do. I would have, um, you know, John McClane go back to L.A., go back to Nakatomi to get an award for whatever, or, like, they reopen Nakatomi or something. 
and then you know terrorists take over like I would bring back I would bring back all the characters I would bring back um you got to bring back Al got to you got to have Al in there maybe he's retired or maybe he's getting ready to retire you know um got to have my my main man uh, Reginald Vell Johnson in there love that guy um you got to have you got to bring back Bonnie Bedelia no doubt about that and hell, bring back um, bring back Samuel Jackson. Maybe have him living out in L.A., and he comes to visit John McClane, and you know this situation unfolds. You know they get involved in another adventure, and you know have him struggling with it. You know he's older. You know he's trying to survive, and it's harder. Um, you know that's what I would do. I would have it go back to Nakatomi, and. Just uh, go back to basics, you know, bring John McTiernan back to direct and go back to the basics and just try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, just keep the movie as simple as possible. You know, try to get everybody back, you know, the cast and, and John McTiernan and just make it simple. That's That's what made the first four films so great because they're simple. They were just simple movies. And that's what you got to do for Die Hard 6 if I were to do it. And also I, I Die Hard Arcade. I love that game. I I have Sega Saturn, but that's a hard game to get a hold of. Um I do want to get that game because that was fun. I really enjoyed that game. I remember playing that in the arcade a lot. Fun fun game. But Die Hard 6 that's how I would do it. Number 9. What are some of your favorite WWF slash WWE PPVs. Well, since we were talking about Survivor Series, um, I did really like 97, Survivor Series 97, I thought was good. Even the Montreal Screwjob, I thought that was a good match. I did like that one. Survivor Series 2002, where Shawn Michaels won the first Elimination Chamber match, I thought that was a good pay-per-view. Um, I had that, I think, no, I borrowed that from someone on DVD. I, I thought I had that at one point, but I did not. Um, let's go look at some of the other pay-per-views. The real pay-per-view is not Payback and Elimination Chamber. You know, shitty pay-per-views like that. Cyber Sunday and Taboo Tuesday, those were cool ideas. Like, you vote for the matches. I don't know why they still don't do that. I thought those were cool ideas. Um, liked those pay-per-views. Royal Rumble, uh... Ninety five and ninety six were good when Shawn Michaels won back to back. Ninety five he went in at number one. Um, ninety seven was good. I like that one. Uh, Two thousand one was a really good uh, Royal Rumble pay per view. Two thousand four was great when Chris Benoit won. Two thousand seven was cool because Undertaker came in last and won. I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, 94, I like the idea how they had two people win. Um, I'm glad that they only ever did that one time because that would have just been a stupid idea if they kept doing it and doing it. So I'm glad that was just once. Um, WrestleMania, there has been a lot of great WrestleManias. Um, the first WrestleMania I thought was great. Um, WrestleMania 2 was okay, 3 was great, 4 and 5 were great, 6 was great. 7 was good, 8 was okay, um, I did like WrestleMania 10, I liked 12 and 13, 14 was good, 15 was good, 2000 was a really, I really liked that WrestleMania, 17 and 18 were great, 19 was good, 20 was great, 22 was really good, that one, 22, WrestleMania 22 was the first wrestling DVD my brother got and we used to watch me and him used to watch WrestleMania 22 all the time um, we still have that DVD 23 I liked 24 I liked 25 was good 26 was decent 
I did like the two uh, ECW one night stands. I thought those were really good pay per views. Just fun. Those were just really fun pay per views, especially the first one because it was pretty much just ECW. King of the Ring, um, 93, I like the tournament of 93, and 94 were good tournaments. And I like King of the Ring, 97, that was a good pay-per-view in my opinion. I wish they still did that, you know, as a pay-per-view, not as, you know, like on Monday Night Raw. No, I like when they did that as a pay-per-view. Good old SummerSlam. Uh... First one was great. Uh, 90 was great. 91 was great. I love 92. Um, 96 was good. 97 was great as well. Really like 98. 2002 was good when my main man Shawn Michaels came back and beat the shit out of Triple H. That was a lot of fun. So those were good pay-per-views. Uh, WWF One Night Only, those, um, were, f- that was fun, if they only did one. That was the one they did in Europe, one of the ones they did in Europe. Those were good, I liked a lot of the European ones. Um, the exclusive to Europe ones, like Rebellion and Insurrection, um, those were good shows. I, I remember watching those, like, on video and stuff, those were fun, I like those. I'm just pulling up some of the other ones. But I think my favorite pay-per-views in your house, those were just fun. Those were just fun pay-per-views back in the day. Armageddon, like 2002. I liked Armageddon 2002. That was a good one. No Way Out 2000 was good. Royal Rumble 2000. Forgot to mention that one. Loved Royal Rumble 2000. Great pay-per-view. Uh, Vengeance. Those were good shows. I liked Vengeance 2001 when they did the Undisputed title. That was That was cool. I liked Vengeance, um, 2004, 2006 I liked when DX came back, 2007 was cool because Mick Foley was in that, the main event of that one, when they started calling it Night of Champions, so, 2010, that's when they brought back the six pack, uh, challenge, that was a cool match. Backlash, there's been some really good Backlash pay-per-views. Pretty much any pay-per-view from 2000. 2000 was just such a great year for WWF. So many great pay-per-views. Um, just a great time to be a wrestling fan. 2000 was where it was at. Backlash 2000 was awesome. 2001 was good. 2004, I like the main event in that one. There were some good Judgment Days. 2000 once again. No Mercy 2000. No Mercy 99. No Mercy 2001. All good shows. No Mercy 2008 when Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho had that kick-ass ladder match. That was a great ladder match. Fully loaded, 2000. But yeah, my favorite were the In Your Houses. Those were just fun shows back in the day. You know. And I I liked how they all had like taglines like... In Your House 7, Good Friends, Better Enemies. In Your House 10, Mind Games. Like, just, those were just fun shows. I miss those. I wish they still did In Your House. Those were just fun shows back in the day. 
Good old in your house. You know, degeneration X in your house. A cold day in hell. A breakdown in your house, you know. Ah, the good old days. So yeah, a lot of the one They've done so many. There's been a lot. So a lot of those I mentioned. And the final question for this Q&A session. Who wins in this eight-man battle royal? Burt Gummer, Michael Myers, Jack Torrance, Mr. Miyagi, Jack Burton, The Punisher, Chucky, Major Payne. Very good. Very good. Well, Chucky would get eliminated first. Then probably Jack Burton... And then Jack Torrance. Um, then probably Major Payne. Then Michael Myers. So the final, it would be between The Punisher, Burt Gummer, and Mr. Miyagi, in my opinion. Burt and The Punisher would run out of ammo. And they would try to fight each other. And Mr. I think Mr. Miyagi would win. Mr. Miyagi would kick everybody's ass. My money's on Miyagi. Yeah, he would he would wipe out everybody, in my opinion. So, Mr. Miyagi for the win. So anyway, folks, I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, long Q&A. I know this part is over two hours, but this, like I said, this was going to be the last part. No doubt about it. I um, hope that you guys, like I said, really enjoyed this q and I thank all of you for sending questions in. Really enjoyed it. It means a lot to me. It means that you guys actually care about what I do and you guys actually watch my videos. So, thank you all once again. Hope that you enjoyed it and I will, uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll be here with more videos. Bye-bye.